Okay, example two. Andrew has two summer jobs. He works no more than a total of 25 hours a week. Both jobs allow him to have flexible hours, but in whole hours only. At one job, Andrew works no less than 12 hours and earns $9 an hour. At the other job, Andrew works no more than 20 hours and earns $8.25. What combination of numbers of hours will allow him to maximize his earnings and what can he expect to earn? So we have to figure out what my objective function is going to be and figure out what my constraints are. So I'm going to go ahead and I will underline what information we use for the objective function. So I want to maximize his earnings, so I'm maximizing money. Here we have information on money, and here we have information on money. Constraints, we have that at one job, Andrew works no less than 12 hours, and at the other, no more than 20. And then at the top here it says he works no more than a total of 25 hours a week. So everything underlined in black is the constraints in red will be used for an objective function. So first I got to label what x will be and what y will be. So x can be job one and y can be job two. If he works no more than a total of 25 hours, that means in total x plus y has to be less than 25 and we could be up to 25 hours a week so I can put less than or equal to. At one job Andrew works no less than 12 hours. So Andrew is going to work for job one x at least 12 hours or more. So x will be greater or equal to 12 hours. For job two he works no more than 20 hours so y will be less than or equal to 20. So I can graph those constraints onto my graph here. I just want to make sure I can do all 25 on this. Mm, looks like it's only going to go up to 20. So I can let every... Mm, every block... I'll represent it with a 2. Oops. Eight. Okay, so when I graph the other, or the first linear inequality, I just have to move the x over. So that it's in y equals mx plus b format, so it's easier to graph. So I'm going to start at 25, so that's here. And I'll go down one, over one. Okay, so I'm going to check a point to see if I'm above or below. So I'll check 0. So I'll plug in 0 for x and y. And I get that 0 is less than or equal to 25, which is true. So I am underneath that line. Alright, so then I have the x has to be greater than 12. So on the x-axis I find 12. I'm bigger than 12, so I'll be on the right side of that line and y is less than 20. So my y-axis I find 20 and y has to be less than 20. So I have a shared region. I'm dealing with whole numbers only so I'm just going to dot 
in this section. Right, and then I might as well make my objective function. At job one, he earns $9, so I can represent that as 9x. And at job two, 8.25. So I can represent that as $8.25 for y, and that will equal my earnings or my profit. All right, so I'm going to plug in the corners, the vertices. This corner here is the corner 12 and 13. This corner here is 12 and 0. And this corner here is 25 and 0. So I'll plug in those values and see what I get. I'll just label them. This can be 1, 2, 3. Okay, so for point one, my x value is 12, and my y value is 0. And that is going to give me 108. And then for my next point, I have 12 for my x value and 13 for my y. And I'm just going to have to plug that into my calculator. So, one moment. And that is 200 and fifteen dollars and twenty five cents point three x value is twenty five y value is zero and that gives me two hundred and twenty five dollars so if Andrew was to work twenty five hours at job one and zero hours at job two he would make the most for earnings. So this is how we can maximize his earnings is by working 25 hours at job one and zero hours at job two. So here are just some notes. So you need to know that the solution to an optimization problem is usually found at one of the vertices of the feasible region. So one of those corners of that solution region. To determine the optimal solution to an optimization problem using linear programming, follow these steps. You're going to create an algebraic model that includes a defining statement of the variables used in your model. So what is going to be x? What will be y? The restrictions on the variables. So you got to look to see what kind of numbers are we dealing with. Are they whole? Are they integers? Are they real numbers? We need to know a system of linear inequalities that describes constraints. So that's all the lines that you draw. And an objective function that shows how the variables are related quantity or related to the quantity to be optimized. Step two is you're going to graph the system of inequalities to determine the coordinates of the vertices. And then you'll evaluate the objective function by substituting all those values in and then compare the results and choose a desired solution and verify that solution to make sure it satisfies the constraints of the problem situation. After that, you can try the following practice questions.